On today's show, we're going to talk about whether you take pictures with one eye closed, one eye open, or as some people have said, both eyes closed. Good morning and welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment, the first live show on photography, video, streaming, all things related here on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, youtube.com slash photojoseph. If you are not subscribed, do the subscribe thing, hit the like button, hit the bell, hit all the buttons, and just make sure that all the things are good, and we'll all be good. Hey, uh, today we're talking about how you shoot. This is a very interactive show. I want to know from you guys whether you shoot with your you know, which is your dominant eye that you shoot with? And then do you shoot with it covered like this so that your, your one eye is covered? Or do you shoot like this so one eye is out? Do you close that eye? Do you open that eye so you have both eyes open? How do you shoot? That's what we're going to talk about. But before we talk about that, I want to very briefly talk about this. This is that lovely little bag from Cozy Speed, the Streetomatic. We're giving this away. Friday, the contest ends. Here's how you enter if you haven't already. Although if you haven't already, it might be a little bit late. But if you haven't, the entries are over on Facebook, facebook.com slash photojoseph. You are meant to upload a picture like this, a diptych. You build a diptych that shows a black and white on one side and a black and white on the other. The first one on the left would be your black and white without any color filter. The one on the right is with a colored filter. One of the colored filters. You're adding two black and white photos, one with and one without a color filter, so we can see the difference. So there are a number of entries up here. There's one that ended up in this gallery. I'm not even sure how that got there because I don't think anybody could add to the gallery. But then there's a bunch just on the page. You can see here, scroll through, and there's quite a few on here. If you have submitted a picture and you are hoping to win, you need likes. It's all about the likes. So if you've got a picture up there, share wide and far and wide. Tell all your friends, come, like my picture. Uh, if you are not submitting a picture but you still want to vote, go in there and like the picture that you like the best or like multiples if you want to be like that. And, and by Friday, on Friday's show, we will announce the winner. And then Ryan will ship this bag. Well, not this one. Again, this one's mine. We have another one, all brand new, untouched, unsullied, that will go out to the winner wherever you be in the world. So that is that. So don't forget about that. Facebook.com slash photojoseph. Find the pictures, like, submit if you haven't already. You have got a, uh, you've, you've got some time there. Okay. Um, let's, let's get into the show, shall we? Let's just talk about this. So again, how do you shoot? Now, if you've got, whatever you're doing, if you've got a reason for the way you're doing it, or you just want to chime in, put it into the live comments. We, of course, have the live comments going here. I can see your comments here, whatever you're going to say about it. If you uh, if you want me to see your comment, make sure you put at photo Joseph in front of it, like Talman has down there, saying lots of lag on two different devices. I don't know about the lag. Can't tell you what's going on there, but we have, we have good connection. Um, tell me how you shoot and why, if there's a particular reason. And let me tell you the way, I'm going to tell you how I do it. And... Often, it, okay, well, my true answer is I switch it up. I'm constantly switching it up. A lot of it depends on the lens that I'm shooting with. So I learned a technique when I was shooting sports in high school. So this is like a really long time ago. Uh, you know, if you're shooting sports, you're probably using a long lens. And when you look through that long lens, if you've got your eyes covered, you've got one eye up, you're looking through that long lens, you see a very narrow field of view of what's going on. So let's say you're shooting football. There's a lot going on, people all over the field, and where the heck is that guy with that pointy little funny-shaped ball thing running around? Somewhere he's around here, I'm sure I'm sure of it. And if you're looking just through your long lens, you're like, where'd he go, where'd he go, where'd he go, where'd he go? There he is, and then you're tracking him, and then he gets out of frame, and you're like, crap, where'd he go, where'd he go? Can't find him. And so you end up doing this a lot, where, oh, there he is, right, and, and I missed him, where, there he goes. So that was kind of the old way, if you will. And then at some point I realized that if I kept both eyes open, I had a... I don't know what you call it, like a weird parallax view, but I'd have two field of views at the same time. You'd have the wide field of view, just from your naked eye, and then the zoomed-in telephoto field of view from the eye looking through the camera. And what it allowed me, and while it was admittedly got a little bit confusing, I got used to it pretty quickly. It allowed me to be able to scan the entire field, or a much wider field of view, see where the ball would be, where the player was, and move into them. And then maybe if it was kind of at this point a little bit too much seeing both, I could obviously close that one eye, only looking through the right eye and see the action. That was what I did. I trained myself to do that. I don't know if it's a tip that I've read somewhere or picked up from somebody else. I have no idea, but it's something I trained myself to do. Now, skip forward a couple of years, and I don't do that very often anymore. Now, I think there's a couple reasons for this. I don't shoot sports, for one. That's, I just, that's just not my thing. Uh, you might remember I did the video with the G9 about I shot the basketball game. We'll link to that up here if you missed that. Talking about how this performed for me in a sports environment. 
being that I don't shoot sports very often, it was all very kind of re renew for me. Wow, I forgot a lot of all this stuff. Um, but I did that a bit, but it didn't work out as well for me as it used to. And I think part of it is because I'm getting old. Because what I find is that my distance focus isn't as good as it used to be. And so now when I do this, I've got my right eye is, of course, sharp because the camera is focused on that. And my left eye might not be quite so sharp. So it's not as easy as it used to be. So it might be a young person's game. I don't know. In a moment, I'm going to look at the comments and see what you guys are saying. But that's how I would often do it. Now, I, I have found that I've still been doing that for street photography a little bit, even where you have a wide field of view if I'm shooting with like a, a 30 millimeter lens or something, or a, a 15 mil, 30 mil equivalent, because I can still get that wide view on there. But for the most part, that one eye open was really reserved for sports photography. Uh, nowadays, I do, I do tend to switch it up. It's, I find it easier on my brain and easier on my eyes if, the, if one eye is covered. And if I'm doing this, I will do this to keep my nose from hitting the sensor, uh, hitting the, um, the touchpad back here, because I do like that back focus, being able to re to move the focus point with my thumb. If you haven't seen how that works, ooh, another video to check out. We did a video on that. That's a super awesome trick. But at the same time, if I'm not doing that, I'm not doing not doing the touchpad on the focus, I will often just put my left eye up and, and just go and just shoot like that. <clears throat> I find also, I think what I realized too, is sometimes I'm like this. This eye is open, but it's completely covered just because it's easier physically to not bother closing it. But now it's blocked out. It's not obscuring my view. Um, but if someone like walks up next to me, then I'm, I'm probably going to see that. I just change it up all over the place. But those are the reasons that I, I do it different ways. So let's get up the comments here and let's see what all you guys say. So Talman Murphy says, well, you're talking about the lag. Hopefully your lag is gone. SR Digital says, I have to shoot with my left eye. So my right eye is blocked by the camera and my hand. Frustrating if you want to keep track of items outside of the lens's field of view. So you're saying you have to shoot with your left eye. So perhaps for some reason you can't shoot with your right eye. Um, yeah, if you can't switch, then that certainly can be limiting. Uh, but uh, um, I mean, there's not much you can do about that, right? One of the things that's cool about something like the G9, because the viewfinder is so big, it's really designed, not only is it really big field of view, but it has zoom steps on it, so it actually gets a little bit smaller, so that if you're wearing eyeglasses and your glasses hold your eye a little bit farther back, you can still see the full frame. You ever look through a, a camera with glasses on, and because your glasses are on, your eyes not right up to the cup, it's out a little bit, you can't see the edges of the viewfinder. The G9 actually zooms out so that you, you end up with a big black border so that you can be this far away and still see it. So for, for SRO Digital, if you're shooting with your left eye, if you have a G9 and your thumb's in the way or your nose is getting in the way or anything like that, you could actually pull back a little bit on the G9 and shrink it down and still see everything. So just one of those things to consider. It's, it's a pretty neat little trick. Uh, Martin, I must admit, I've never thought about it. I can't even think of what I do. It just happens. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. There are times, absolutely, where you don't, you just, you just go. You just shoot, and it is what it is. Um, just says, being left eye dominant, I think I end up using the LCD a lot because I don't like the camera in front of all my face. Almost a slightly claustrophobic. Okay, that's interesting. So left eye dominant, but you don't like the camera here, so you tend to use the LCD more. Interesting observation. And very, this is great. This is why I wanted to do this live. Get, get an idea of what you guys are doing, different reasons. Um, <laughs> Trevor says he shoots and sleeps with one eye open. Smart. DP4635 says, besides eliminating outside light, does the EVF have other benefits to consider over the LCD? Is the re resolution better or easier to focus? Very interesting question as well. Um, benefits, actual benefits. So he's asking, is there a benefit to looking through the viewfinder, the electronic viewfinder, versus looking at the LCD, other than blocking out light. I would say blocking out light is probably the primary difference just from a you know, information standpoint. You, you get the same information on both fields of view. Um, actually, that's not totally true. If you're shooting with the GH5 or GH5S and you have the waveform monitor, I'm pretty sure the waveform doesn't show up through the viewfinder. You know, I'd have to double check and I just camera draw, I'll put away now. I don't think it does. So in that case, you might get a little bit more information on the LCD. Obviously, if you're shooting with the LCD, you can go waist level or you can go above your head or you can do selfie view or you know, there's any number of variety of things you can't do through the LCD. Also, if you're interacting with a subject, if you're shooting a, if you're doing portraits, for example, I really like that I can shoot with the LCD, whether I'm waist level or holding it up or wherever it might be, because it allows me to maintain eye contact with my subject. I'm not doing this. So um, move a little bit to the left and yeah, pick up your chin a little bit. That's very impersonal. 
Whereas if you're doing this, even if the camera's way up here and you're directing them, it feels, I think it feels much better to the client, to the subject. So it's something to consider as well. But yes, when I'm outdoors in bright light, uh, if, if this is too hard to see, or I just want to get a really, really clear view, you know, sometimes you can see this just fine, but you want a little bit better view, then going up here is great. The other cool thing is if you hit play and you put your eye up to the viewfinder, you can see your pictures very clearly because you've got all that light blocked out. So if you're reviewing pictures, you're trying to check critical focus or whatever you're looking at, you can actually go up here and play and scrub through your pictures and see, see your image through the viewfinder, which is pretty slick. Pretty slick for sure. Uh, let's see here. Butch Miller says, I'm 63 years old and shoot action sports full time. Shooting with both eyes open is required for self-preservation. Oh, yeah. That whole thing where big, large people with helmets come running straight at you. Very, very good point. That does ring a bell as one of those dangers of shooting football, especially, uh, that I recall. Very good point. Thank you for mentioning that. I kind of forgot about that. But yeah, if you're shooting like this, you can tell if some... 300 pound linebackers coming right at you uh, from this side. If you're doing this, you can't see them, and then you're flat as a pancake. Wonderful. Very good. Uh, DP4, four, four, DP with a bunch of numbers says, I assume EVF conserves more battery. Actually, I don't think it does. I, I think that the difference between the battery consumption of the EVF versus the LCD is minimal. Minimal. Um, what you're going to save, if you're looking to save power, then have the monitors display your sleep as quickly as possible. That's where you're going to save power. The difference between the two is, to my understanding, to my recollection, and certainly with my experience, is absolutely minimal. So, so it's probably not much of a concern. Uh, Burns Texas, I don't ever use the viewfinder. I like the LCD or external monitor. It's just how I use it. The viewfinder is useless. Fair enough. I think that if you're shooting a video, people are much more likely to use the LCD for shooting video, whereas shooting stills, people are more likely to put it up to their eye. I could be totally wrong about that. That's at least my personal experience. But I do still shoot a fair amount of video pulling it up when I am in a bright outdoor situation and I just want to get that, that cleaner, tighter field of view. So there's that too. Um, that's it for the live comments on that. So there you go. Different, different opinions. Oh, here we go. SR Digital says, my right eye has an artificial lens in it. Oh, okay. Let me pull this back up here. My right eye has an artificial lens in it. Set to long distance. The eye has suffered from glaucoma, so as lower quality vision, G9 would be good, um, but don't like the hair shutter button. You get used to it. Honestly, you do. I know I talked about it in the very beginning. I wasn't sure because mine was a pre-production unit, whether it was going to be that way, um, but it apparently is. But honestly, you get used to it. You get used to it pretty quickly. So I wouldn't be too concerned about the hair's trigger, um, but that's interesting. So you have to shoot with your left eye for that reason. There you go. All kinds of different reasons to have to shoot that way. Uh, Tuba, Tuba Dylan says, I like using the viewfinder for video. I get more accurate focus that way. Yep, fair enough. Lance says, I shoot with my right eye open. I find that after shooting for 10 minutes or more, my eyes get blurry. Does anybody else find this issue? Not to call you out, Lance, but how old are you? I think it's, like for me, I know it's an age thing. The older I get, you know, obviously your eyes deteriorate over time. I'm not 18 anymore. When I was a kid shooting stuff like this, I could shoot all day long, shoot back-to-back -back games, both eyes open. It's also shooting film, you know, totally different time, right? But, uh, but yeah, I, I concur. If I do have both eyes open for too long trying to look at things, that can, you can get fatigued. That can get a little bit tiring. Covering one is a bit relaxing, but again, for me, covering it by switching eyes, and fortunately, I can use either eye to shoot through, by leaving it physically open but being covered works out quite well for me. That really, it just does. It's, I'm, I don't know, interesting. Okay. Lens is 67, but, he's, but that's been happening for 20 years. They've been getting, getting tired. So, yeah, I, I get it. I mean, you know, our eyes start to go at, what, 30 or something like that, our eyes start to go, for at least for, even if you had 20-20 vision, that's when they start. I know that's for me. First time I went, wait, <laughs> wait, I don't have perfect vision anymore. It was like my 30th birthday. I went, damn it, it's like a light switch. 30 and boom, it's all downhill from there. Uh, Burnstack, the Tether app on Andrew. Hmm? Um, Burns, oh, Ryan's saying, oh, thanks, because he's 30. Uh, Burns Tech, the, the Tether app on Android makes it even more useless for me. Um, I'd be lying, but I've used it once or twice. I wear glasses and hate the light bleed when wearing them. Yeah, that is that is tough. The light bleed when wearing glasses, keeping that off like that is, is a little bit annoying. So, okay. Well, there you go. That's what I wanted to talk about. I think that was kind of a, kind of a fun discussion. Hey, um, 
If you have, you know, if you're watching this not live, you have thoughts about this comments, obviously drop them down below. Tell us in the comments how you're shooting and why, especially if you've seen something different from here that you think other people might uh, might be good, uh, might be uh, interested in. Hey, um, okay, schedule over the next couple of weeks. First of all, don't forget we got the bag to give away. We're going to give this away on Friday. That will be a winner will be announced on Friday's morning show. So you have until then to get your entries in and get your likes up. Um, Friday, I'm going to do a show about my gear because I am leaving on Saturday for a two plus week working vacation. So I have a job to do on that. I, the client still hasn't told me how much I'm allowed to talk about. So for now, I won't. Hopefully, I'll be able to so I can explain a little bit more before I go. But I don't know. But I'm going to show you the gear at least. And I will do, I will try to do some live shows while I'm on the road. I've already shot and edited a couple of videos, so there will be videos to be released while I'm away, so that, that you, we won't be completely dark here on the channel, but it won't be as active as normal. And, uh, and then I come back from that, and it's like a week, and then it's NAB. So there's a lot going on coming up here. Um, anything else? I think that's about it. Hey, thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, oh, other comments coming in. Okay, let me just go back to these comments real quick and see. Trevor says, how are you enjoying the GH5S? Love it. Do you find yourself reaching for it more than the GH5 for video? No, I wouldn't say reaching for it more. Certainly if it's a low light situation and I don't need stabilization, then absolutely I'm going to grab it. Um, I am going to be taking both the GH5 and the GH5S on this job. But no, I wouldn't say I go for it more. Uh, just, again, if there's low light, then obviously if I'm going to be a low light situation, then for sure, and I don't need the stabilization, then for sure it's, it's the one I'm going to grab. But I think they, the two cameras are extremely complementary to each other, extremely complementary. Um, Esro says you'll be taking all of your gear again. Oh yeah, this one I really will because this is, I've got, I, I, have, I have a job to do. Um, so I will be taking a lot of gear. My wife's going to be like, I thought we were on vacation. Mm -hmm. Hi honey, just a little bit of gear. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's get out of here. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Uh, have yourselves a wonderful rest of the week, and we'll see you. Hey, we'll do like a, I'll do, probably do a live broadcast tonight. Why not for the uh, for the event? We'll see what happens. Maybe, maybe. All right, that's it. See you Friday.